again watch fans welcome back I like to talk about watch collecting at least my watch collecting anyway now it would be rather presumptuous of me to tell anyone how they should collect watches or what they should collect whether you collect divers or chronographs sport watches dress watches whatever you collect it's really a personal and individualistic thing but I do want to uh, share some things that I found useful in my watch collecting and maybe it will help you get some um, some more enjoyment or get the most out of your watch collecting hobby I think the first item that you should have is a watch box now you can get a watch box um, anywhere from ten or twenty dollars up to hundreds or even thousands of dollars depending upon the material the construction uh, and that kind of thing I found uh, a really good watch box on Amazon I'll put a link in the description and I think this was about seventeen dollars uh, it's a 12 position watch box and I like it because it protects my watches uh, the last thing you want to do at least the last thing I want to do is to throw a bunch of watches in a drawer have them rattle around have them scratch each other so I think a watch box is probably the first thing that you want to get if you're going to have more than just a few watches and again it doesn't have to be a, an expensive uh, item it can be something that's quite useful and rather inexpensive the second thing that I think you should have uh, at least I've uh, found is extremely useful is a spring bar, a spring bar tool and this is nothing more than a little tool with a a pin on one end and a little fork on the other you can see that there and when you want to change straps on a watch if you look closely you can see that it's a little bit tough on this one because of the tightness of the fit but there's a little bar that runs uh, inside the strap and it's uh, held together uh, held in place with spring tension and this little bar uh, goes here and allows you to uh, momentarily depress the spring bar uh, release the strap off the watch and then you can you can change straps so so spring bar tools uh, come in a variety of shapes and sizes um, you can get rather nice ones uh, this is a Bergeron tool uh, which is a rather good one you can also get uh, inexpensive ones for just a few dollars that uh, unfortunately after using once or twice tend to uh, deform because the metal is not very good so you probably want to get a good spring bar tool uh, to use in changing straps and the pin end of the tool is useful when you're changing uh, bracelets if the bracelet is the kind of bracelet that has little pins that hold the links in place another item that's extremely useful is uh, a uh, microfiber cloth uh, these come in various shapes and sizes uh, sometimes they come with watches sometimes they come with other products uh, for example this one here uh, actually came with that watch box that I just showed so that was a, a nice little tool for wiping off your watch uh, both sides uh, after you wear it for a while it gets a little grungy from the sweat on your wrist so it's good to have a uh, a microfiber cloth uh, you can also buy higher quality ones that are this one happens to be a, a very large one uh, 12 by 16 uh, and these are good not just for watches you can also uh, use them to uh, clean off your glasses if you wear glasses uh, clean off the uh, the stemware uh, it comes in really really handy so a microfiber cloth is another item that you should have I think the next item I recommend at least for uh, what I found extremely useful is to have a, a jeweler's loop now a jeweler's loop is nothing more than a little uh, magnifier uh, plastic or glass in a little frame you hold this up to your eye and let's see and you can see it allows you to magnify what's on the watch and it's especially useful when looking at the information on the back of the watch this happens to be a, a Hamilton let's see if I can do this without making everybody seasick so 
a loop is extremely helpful. And this one actually happens to be one I used to use 20 or 30 years ago, uh, back when I was into photography and used slides. So this would rest on the slide. I'd look down, I could see it. Usually you use a loop like this. You put this side to your eye. Uh, some, some people are good at actually holding this in place in their eye socket. Uh, sometimes you'll see jewelers or watchmakers with a little strap or metal band that goes from either side and they wear it around their head. Uh, another type of uh, loop is this kind with a little fold out like this. Um, these come in different magnifications. Uh, this one happens to be a 5x, uh, 5 times magnification, which actually I find the best for general purpose use. Uh, this one is a 10, 10 times magnification. Uh, these are relatively inexpensive, inexpensive. In fact, I think you can get a set of 5, 10, and 15 uh, magnification, three different little loops for 10 or 15 bucks on Amazon. Again, I'll put a I'll put a link in the description. Um, so again, a handy thing for anytime you want to try to read uh, the fine print or read what's on the back of the watch. I actually take this with me uh, when I go to a to a watch dealer to examine watches because I want to see what close, see what's going on. So very handy to have a loop. One of the most useful things is to have a uh, digital uh, micrometer. Uh, otherwise known as the caliper, uh, which allows you to uh, measure the dimensions of your watch. So, for example, this one uh, I actually bought. There's a, a chain of auto stores called AutoZone, at least in the Northeast U.S. I think this was about $12. Uh, you want to make sure you get one that's plastic, that has plastic grippers. Uh, this one I've had for uh, many years, but I would never use this on, on a watch because there's a chance that the metal might scratch the case of the watch. So it's very simple to use. You uh, reset it, hold the watch, you can get a measurement. You've seen this in all kinds of videos. And there you can see that the, I'm measuring the case diameter, if I don't drop it. And it is uh, about 38 millimeters. So uh, you can measure the thickness. What's cool is this top measurement, you can measure the inside dimension of something. So here I'm measuring the bandwidth, which is 20 millimeters in this case. So a real handy tool is a uh, digital micrometer. Another item which uh, you may not think of, uh, at least initially when you get into the watch collecting hobby, is a little notebook. This is just a Field Notes uh, a notebook, uh, three and a half by five inches tall. And I keep track of every watch I have. So in this case, uh, this is the Hamilton uh, khaki field mechanical, a hand wind uh, mechanical watch. And you can see that uh, I keep track of the model number. In this case, there is no serial number. When I bought it, where I bought it, how much I paid, and a bunch of other information about, about the watch. And uh, what kind of complications it has, water resistance, any notes that I might want to take about it. Uh, why do I do this? Well, I like to sometimes refer back to information about watches I have. Uh, I do have insurance on my watches, so uh, it's good to have this in one place so that I can provide that information to the insurance company to insure my watches. And also, uh, I also keep track of ideas like, uh, gee, you don't want to check out certain watches uh, or notes or thoughts I've had about things. So a little notebook keeping track of, of your watches uh, is a really handy. Now, some people may, may do it online. They may use a spreadsheet. Um, anything works but the point is to have something that's that's handy uh, you can refer to uh, that's easy to do so this is what this is what works for me and finally the last thing I have that I find from useful is a magnifying glass and this is a rather large magnifying glass one thing I like about this one is that it's got a little light uh, a little LED lights to shine on the subject so I can see better. Uh, sure, the, the loop works fine if I, for in close quarters, but this is great. And then this particular magnifying glass has a little uh, 10x magnifier here. So sure, I can, I can see, you know, I can magnify my image or I can get like really close uh, if I need to. 
anyway this is like 20 15 or 20 dollars uh useful not just for watches obviously uh it's a good good thing to have around the house anyway and the light really really helps so magnifying glass another tool that uh, i have in my uh my watch collecting toolkit so there you have it uh, so whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned collector, uh, here's some useful uh, tools and tips that I find uh, in my uh, watch collecting endeavors. Um, so why don't you share um, your tips and tools in the in the comments below? Uh, be interesting to see what how other people uh, manage their watch collecting activities. Uh, what's useful to you? Um, so share what you can. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.